Good morning, guys. So we are up early this morning and we are headed to the shop. We need to pick up some uh, lighter cubes and then we need to pick up some uh, uh, the other uh, ugly drum smoker and get it to the house. Uh, I had it at the shop, uh, just kind of getting it out of the way for a while. But uh, we are going to head that way. We're going to grab that. And then when we get back to the house, we are going to do us some brisket and ribs. It's an empty box. My Weber lighter cubes, empty box. That sucks. Guess I might have to go old school. A little butcher paper, some oil. Alright, now I just need to get some straps. We're going to strap it down and then we will head back to the house, set up the pop up, set up the competition table, and get to uh, making some brisket. Alright, guys, so this fire is really hot, so I'm going to pour half into this basket and half into this basket. I'm going to open these up about a finger, finger width depth on all four of these openings and then let these slowly climb up to right around 300 to 280 to 300 is where I want to be. Pocket in your dress? Oh, that is awesome. So we'll keep these top lids open all the way and like I said, just about a finger width apart on the other openings. Uh, my neighbor's actually starting to mow their lawn right now, so if it starts to get loud, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll probably just do another video later on on how to trim all this stuff up. Um, but it's an electric lawnmower, so it's really not that bad, not that loud. So. Anyways, we're gonna get this rolling. These are going to be slowly climbing. I've got a gauge here, straight up is 300. And then on this one, because it has a center bong, um, I've got a gauge that I put right there so I know exactly how hot it is at the very top. And uh, make sure you got a good seal on your lids. And uh, these are already rolling smoke, so let's let these slowly climb up to 300. 
I'm gonna go wash my hands and then we're gonna start cutting down on this on this brisket and ribs. Okay, let me move some of this stuff out of the way so we don't get everything contaminated while we are getting stuff cut up. So on my briskets, um, I like to take that fat side and that's how I open them. And I'll try to just cut right here and take the brisket out and leave as much blood in the bag as possible and then toss the bag away. So this isn't going to be a competition trim at all. Um, what we like to do with our leftovers is uh, chopped. So, I mean, I'm not even going to cut off a ton of the fat. Um, the good fat. Uh, the hard stuff we'll try to get most of it off. But... Let's let that thing dangle. Get that angle dangle. And we'll drop it right here on cutting surface. Get this bag of juice out of here. Alright. So I'm going to start with a good sharp knife. Start cutting junk off like that. I mean, that's gonna burn. It's just not gonna be any good. I usually cut a little more than I need to right here. Um, Cause it's just it's so much faster. And I lose like an ounce of meat because of it. And save myself a half hour. Really a half hour, but you get the point. It's just such a pain in the butt to cut the hard fat out. What's she doing? Abby! Hey, baby, come over here. See how that was real loose? We just cut that off. And we're not doing a competition cut, like I said, but um, I still want it to be somewhat shaped well and aerodynamic so i'll tell you if, if you want to see that flap right there that whole thing's gonna burn if y'all really want to learn how to trim a good brisket don't learn from me because i'm i'm really not that great at it but uh oh arnie tex man that guy trims a freaking amazing brisket he just he's good at it He's been doing it for a long time and he's been good at it for a long time so if you want to learn from somebody make sure you go check him out on the youtube um he even does online classes um he does in person classes but during this whole virus thing i'd say online's the way to go um so you see there was a big gouge there and i just cut it flat um sometimes from the butcher you get them that way um that's just butcher marks uh, i guess is the best way to put it um so we're just gonna get this top side fat off real fast and that's it for this side um because like i said we're, we're just doing this in the backyard just for some goodies at home i'll probably throw some to the crew at master build uh, my construction company I like it to be a little aerodynamic. See how thin that is? I mean, this isn't a competition grid grade brisket at all, but that's gonna burn real easy. So I cut it off. Um, it's a good cut of meat right there. So I'll probably keep that, just use that for a little snack for the girls and I. So I take one swipe off this side, just cause there's usually that that singed area where they pack the meat, you know, kind of turns gray, like this right here. So I'm just gonna cut, I'm just gonna cut that edge off. But you know, for a cheap brisket, that's not bad marbling on the fat, on the, on the point, fat side. So, all right, so that's it for, for the flat. Let's get her flipped over. Now, I do cook on a ugly drum, and usually when I'm cooking on an ugly drum, 
I do fat side down just to give it a layer of protection between the fire. But I have started using a diffuser, a heat diffuser, and that eliminates me having to spin it and flip it and all that good stuff. Um, keeps me from having a Missy Elliott. Uh, put your thing down, flip it, and reverse it. So uh, we're just going to trim some of this fat off. This is a little bit harder fat here. Um, like I said, I am going to leave some of the fat. Uh, of course, I don't need a whole lot right here on the point, but I do need some towards the bottom at the flat because it is it is a thinner uh, cut of brisket than what I'm used to, um, what I'm usually using. I mean, that's all fat right there. So we'll cut that about in half. I need to sharpen my knife. Like I said, I'll leave some, some thick spots. Again, not a competition uh, trim. This is just a fast, uh, trying to get a video made while I'm watching the kids and not go crazy from cabin fever during the coronavirus. But yeah, that was kind of, that looks like a bag of poop. But anyways, um, that's about all the fat I do want to take off. It's really not that big old chunk right there. A lot of this is going to render down, but for this brisket, that's all I'm going to take off. And I am going to cook it uh, half the time uh, with this side down and half the time with this side up. And the thing is, with these briskets, um, they're only going to take like four to five hours. Um, start to finish so it's not real bad I love using hot fast so uh, these are almost up to temp and uh, I'm gonna pause the video change my gloves and uh, throw some trash away sanitize this table down for some ribs all right guys actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and rub it down before it gets too loud. Um, this is my own mixture, salt, pepper, garlic, paprika, celery salt, and chili powder. And then I'm gonna top it off with some meat church holy cow. All Off camera, I'm going to sterilize these gloves real fast. You got to mix it up because of different size granules, but pretty liberal coating. This is a really big cut of meat, so don't worry about overdoing it because you're probably not going to. Um, I've also got some mesquite chunks uh, in the smoker along with some B&B &B charcoal comp grade. Um, I just, I like the way that B&B &B comp charcoal burns. Uh, it gives me a nice long burn. Abby's what? Come over here and tell me, I can't hear you. As long as I can see you, baby. Huh? Why? We're going to go over the top of this with some holy cow. And you'll notice I'm only doing this side with the holy cow because... And people have their own opinions about this, and I don't know, I could be wrong. I usually am wrong. But 
the flavor doesn't really get that much through the fat so this is the side I, I put my heavy seasoning on so yeah. make sure we get everything nice and covered with both flavors <clears throat> we're gonna let that set um, and then we are going to uh, wash these knives and uh, hopefully by the time we get these knives washed this will be set up sweated out and uh, I'm gonna throw these these are just little snack nuggets Okay, so just like before, um, we're going to go ahead and open this up from the back side. Um, usually I try to get spare ribs to practice with, so I practice and play the way I practice. So, um, but this was all that they had at Sam's the other day with all this stupid stuff going on. So uh, we're going to do baby backs. The good thing about baby backs, there's just a little bit of fat on each side to take off, but that's it. Uh, I'm not even going to pull the skin on these um, just because I, I want to cook them a little bit longer and uh, this that gray skin helps them on competition i will pull them but uh in mass feedings i usually don't pull them and they always turn out tender and good so um it just kind of depends on how you cook them and everybody's got their own way um if you like to pull them pull them i kind of just go go with my gut at the time and uh these these are kind of small and they're going to cook kind of fast um, i just i don't want to pull i just don't want to do it but anyways i'm gonna come through here trim off some of this loose stuff um, other than that i usually use about the same method as i do with spare ribs I'm just going to let these kind of sit right here and then I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw this mix on top and then I'm going to put some honey chipotle killer bee on both sides. So again, uh, the stronger flavor, I'm going for that bottom side, but because the skin is on it, uh, that's all we're flavoring is the skin. So we don't have to put a ton on the bottom side, um, this top side. These are pretty fatty, so um, pretty liberal coating is going to do it just fine. And no, I didn't rub these down. Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Today I just didn't feel like rubbing them down. Um, but I will pat them, try to even some of this out because I don't have a shaker and it's windy. I uh, apologize for the wind noise. So we're going to pat that out. Make sure that's nice and evenly coated. All right, so we're gonna grab our Cosmos Q Honey Chipotle Killer Bee. And this is my go-to for ribs, man. That's my go-to topper. If I had some um, some Dirty Bird Hot, I'd throw that on there too, but um, this Honey Chipotle Killer Bee is so good. And when we glaze it later, I'll throw another dusting on top of, on top of this. Um, All right, let's pat these down just a hair. We'll flip them over, give them another dose. And 
our smokers are getting up to the temp. Um, for some reason, the one with the upright vents is a little slower to get the temp, I found, than my, than my salt off, my shorties. Um, I don't know why that is. I don't know if maybe just the air has to work harder, or maybe it's the heat diffuser that's in there. I don't know. I am going to rub this side in again because I have that skin. I usually don't rub, but with the skin, it's going to make those cuts and embed in certain spots. These ribs are ready to go. So, give me just a few minutes. Let these things come up to temp. I'm going to go wash my hands. I'll take this knife and stuff inside, and we'll be right back. Okay, so these are getting up to temp. I've got my brisket and ribs there, sweating out. Um, this one is my short and stubby. Um, see, it's getting close. Uh, it's at about 250 now, climbing up there. Um, this one's still got a little bit of dirty smoke coming out of it. Um, I know that as low as that gauge is, that temperature is probably 50 degrees higher. Um, where the cooking surface is, uh, which is a few inches higher than that. And then at the top, I know it's probably 30, 40 degrees. So well, this one's probably sitting at the same exact as that one. Um, just the temperature difference on the sides um, from the top to, to there. Anyways, drink water. I've got lots of water going in me, especially right now. Hey guys, just from a medic side, make sure you're taking enough vitamin C. Um, I know that sounds like a duh thing, but it really is. An epidemiologist told me that uh, we need to take more vitamin C, more vitamin D, more zinc, and um, some probiotics. That's going to that's gonna be best at helping not only to combat this, but um, prevent you from, from getting anything like that. So remember, vitamin D, vitamin C, uh, probiotics, and some zinc. Uh, make sure you're getting most of the time honestly the way we eat we don't get all that stuff in our diet so make sure you take some i take a multivitamin and then i have an emergency every day um and guess what if you take too much vitamins that's okay you'll just peel them out that's fine really uh your body will take every bit of it that it needs so take your multivitamins drink some vitamin c uh, or some emergency or whatever uh, i get the walmart brand because i'm cheap but anyways this is about up to temp as soon as it's up to temp we'll throw this meat on and we will start smoking drink more water all right so now i'm actually prepared and can actually do this the right way maybe how about that all right someday i'll get i'll get past being this amateur but uh, so i'm gonna go ahead and take my gauge out of the bone hole bone hole anyway i'm gonna lift my lid off using my cosmos q heat resistant gloves and let's take a look at these see they're they're a little bit sweaty i'm sorry i'm trying to block the wind as much as i can they're a little bit sweaty but for the most part they're dry and they're tightening up uh, see how dry that is right there and that's good that's exactly how i want them so i'm going to grab my tongs and uh, show you how to put these in wrap so in order to wrap these up we got to start with some butter mo butter mo better mo butter mo better so i put uh, a couple of slabs of it on there um, just lengthwise and this is just two pieces of foil that i i made a seam down the middle of uh, to join them together um, to hold in moisture and flavor and all that good stuff because at this point they are cooked enough that they are not going to accept any more smoke no matter how much smoke you put in there uh, at a certain temperature that chemical reaction just doesn't happen so now we got butter now it's time for a little honey honey for that money so we're going to make one of these with honey and butter we're going to make one with honey 
butter and um, some uh, ghost pepper sauce, uh, so ghost pepper dust. Um, but on all of them, we're gonna throw some chipotle down there. And then one, we're just gonna do butter and honey beef chipotle. Which so put that one right there. And now for that hot, hot, hot. I guess this is a good opportunity to show you how to make a double folded top. And usually when I'm using a 18 inch uh, heavy duty, I don't have to do this. But if I just have the 12 inch heavy duty, this is how I do it. You just fold them seams over a few times and uh, You've got a, a double length sealed seam for the most part. And then because this is the honey bee, I'm going to fold it with, I'm, I'm sorry, because this is the ghost pepper one, the keto ghost pepper one, I'm going to fold it like that with a little triangle on it. I know this is the ghost pepper honey, and I know this is the regular honey and butter. So, uh, let's see if we've slowed down with the fire on this one. Because um, the last thing you want to do is start burning them. Uh, once you got this far, and then burn them once you get them back on to the grill. That would be um, stupid. So, uh, let's take a look. While that one's climbing up, we'll see what that looks like. But... Uh, let's take a look and see what our uh, brisket looks like for now.
Oh yeah. Now look our little lunch treats. Man, this thing's wobbling. This this uh this deal I'm using to hold my phone, it's like shaking all over the place and it sucks. So I apologize for that. So here's what I'm gonna do. Uh well, I guess I'm gonna stop this for now because I'd rather have no video than crappy video. So I'm gonna stop this for now and once uh once those ribs, once that fire on those ribs gets back in order, I will throw the ribs back on there meat side down this time bone side up to kind of keep that juices cupped in it and then we're going to do that for about 45 more minutes and then we're going to unwrap them we're going to save all those juices so that we can uh, glaze those ribs as we put them bone side down for the last half hour all right all right so this brisket is ready to be flipped over the fat is bottomed down right now we'll get these little chunks of uh chungus snacks out and uh then we'll get it flipped over so it can continue cooking it's been on there for almost an hour and 45 minutes uh, pretty close to two hours so we'll get this uh, big beefy thing flipped over get these little snacks taken out these are gonna be great for lunch um, like jerky steaks all right just gonna flip this bad boy over but we're not going to flip it directly over we're going to give it a good 90 degree turn Alrighty, getting some good color on it getting a good part filled up on it um i don't wrap until i like the part color or if i'm in a hurry to get it done but i think wrapping if you wrap it before you like the bark you're compromising your flavor you're compromising your finish and all that so um, i like to wait until it's uh until it looks good um, or you know if I'm in a hurry to get it done pretty quick I'm gonna throw some of this meat church on there uh, for one last dazzle all right so our rib can has gotten back under control um, it was a little bit out there and just this golly i can't wait to get a camera give me all this cheesy terrible video all right we'll grab this off careful don't lose your bunghole <laughs> uh, bung all right so i know that this one is the honey and butter remember we're putting those meat down this time i know the way this is folded this is Honey, butter, and ghost pepper. And then lastly, this is just butter and uh, the killer bee. Which we'll be putting ghost pepper on that last one uh, at the very end. Just kind of the finisher flavor. So, we're gonna let these sit. These need to sit in here for another 45 minutes. At 45 minutes, we'll come out and check the brisket, make sure the bark looks good. And it'll probably be time to wrap that one, uh, depending on how it's being set up. And uh, we can go ahead and pull these out of the wrap. Like I said, save the juices. And then uh, what I like to do, if we had some big red, I would mix it in with the uh, juices from the, the honey and the butter, um, not the honey butter and the, uh, and the ghost pepper, but just the honey and the butter. Um, those juices work really well uh, if you mix them with just uh, a little bit of barbecue sauce and a little bit of big red and it makes a really really good glaze on top of your ribs if you like them sweet so that's what we'll do to finish these off i'll see you in 45 minutes all right guys it is absolutely time to pull these ribs off i am excited to see how they turned out that cosmos q um it, it's always a treat mm, man they look good these are golly just the color on these are just amazing let me pull one out and just see it look at the color on that it's hard to see in this light but that's a mahogany color that's a, that's competition color ribs right there man that looks good see it in the sunlight 
bit better. And that looks good. Whew. Man, those are great looking ribs. see those that good. Golly. Cool. We're going to pull these off. I'm going to shut that grill down. I'm going to check this brisket real fast and see if it's ready to go. Well, not like ready to go like finish, but like ready to go wrap up. Color's getting there. Get a good bark on it. See, it's getting a nice, nice color. Uh, that's actually about the color that the ribs were uh, right in there, that mahogany dark bark. So that's what I'd like to see across all of it. So I'm going to flip it and turn it one more time, and then uh, we'll be back out here in about an hour, hour and a half and check on it. That's good. That make your tongue jump out of your forehead. Mm. Slap your mama. All right, guys. So this thing is sitting at about 290. They've been on there for about 45 minutes, maybe about 50 minutes. Um, sitting in those juices and that honey and that butter. So what we're going to do is we're going to take them out. And I'm going to attempt to save the juices of the two. Remember, I don't want the one with the, the ghost pepper to save. Um, so that I can make a glaze for um, for those two um, out of it. So there's one that I'm going to keep a dry rub. We're not going to glaze it. So what we're going to do is we're going to get them out, save the juices, unwrap them, flip them bone side down, glaze, and let it sit for another half hour in the smoker. So um, stick around. I'll try to show you how to do this without making too bad of a mess and embarrassing myself too, too much. So I've got a bowl here to catch the drippings as I pull them off, and I'll just leave them in the uh, in the uh, foil after I pull them off and drain the juices. I'll flip them over in the foil, kind of leave it at a little couch there. So uh, let's get. Close that thing right back so you don't want your fire to go anywhere. Remember by the way I folded them, this is the one with ghost pepper. I don't want those juices. So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to open the end up to where it kind of makes a, a little bit of a funnel where those juices can pour out the end without making too big of a mess. And man, this wind has gotten real high and heavy. I'm sorry guys. I'll try to, try to make some of that better. See all those juices? So we're gonna open this up and you can see, you know, the meat's pulled away from the bone. Just a good looking pan, it smells amazing too. So we're just gonna make a little pouch. the cleanest way I found to do it is make a little quarter of the thing off into a bowl, take the pouch, slide it over. Same thing. Remember this one is just the butter. Uh, this one didn't have any honey in it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and save those juices um, as well and then make this into a, its own little pouch. And this wind is stupid. 
you don't live in West Texas, just count yourself lucky because the wind here sucks and there's no water and there's nowhere to fish and there's no hills. You can watch your dog run away for three freaking weeks because it's so flat. I mean, if you look hard enough and you stand on top of a ladder, you can see the back of your head. It's retarded. So if you don't live here, you're welcome. Anyways, we're gonna get these all flipped over and get them back onto the smoker to finish up for the last half hour. Hit them with a little glaze right before they go in right now I mean and this glaze is just what's already on there um, I usually use barbecue sauce as just a color a colorizer uh, not for flavor because uh, you better have all the flavor you can get in there before this point but yeah this color looks so good it's mahogany it's red that smoky color that you really want I love it absolutely love it looks so good and I like a loose glaze because then you don't have any brush marks or anything like that and uh, you don't have to worry about brush marks or anything like that like if there's a competition so I'm gonna throw these back on the smoker 30 minutes 30 minutes is all it's gonna take these are gonna be done So we're gonna throw it on there. We're gonna stick the lid back on it. Uh, we're probably gonna check this brisket. I'm gonna see if I like the color. If I like the color, I'm gonna go get some um, some uh, foil together and uh, get it wrapped. I'm just gonna use foil today because I'm not jacking with paper out here in this wind. So uh, let's check on the brisket. <laughs> different about a brisket that's cooked on the can. I couldn't tell you exactly what it is, but I don't like the color yet. I may not even wrap this one at all. Um, it's got a good even cook to it. Um, the, the bark's just not there yet, so I'm not going to wrap it. I just spun it, I flip it, and I spun it 90 degrees. I'm going to let that sit in there for another hour and a half or so, and uh, we'll check it again. It'll probably be done in about two and a half, three hours. Um, so a six hour cook all together. So it's been about an hour, hour and a half since I pulled the ribs off and I just put them in the warmer to stay warm um, while we are waiting for this brisket to, to finish up. So uh, let's take a look in the smoker, see if we finally have a bark and let's check the temperature. If it's close, you know, if it's over like 175 close to 180 i'm not even gonna wrap it um it's just not worth it because it'll it'll jump up so fast and it'll be overcooked and all you can do is chop it at that point so i'm gonna check the temperature and check to see how how done it is it's been on for about five and a half hours so i'm thinking it's probably pretty close to done if not done already so let's go ahead and pop this lid off oh man that's a, that's actually decent decent looking little bark there sorry i almost dropped the phone let me put the lid down over here real fast okay here let me hold this a little better so that's a decent little bark not bad so i'm gonna grab my ink bird and i don't know if you have ever used an ink bird but these are awesome i love them instant read thermometers uh the safest thing you've ever oh Dude, Nick goes in so soft. Like that's, watch, it's like butter. Barely any pull when I pull back. I, I can tell you just by poking it, this is done. I bet this is 190, I don't know, 198, 195, close to 200. Let's see. It's 195 right there. 196, 198, yeah. Yeah, she's done. She's done. Nice and soft. Awesome. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up, put it on the foil, and uh, I'm going to let it rest in the foil for a little while. And uh, what you always want to let these things rest for a while. You never, ever, ever, ever pull them off the grill and immediately slice them. It's like a good steak. You ruin it that way. You've got to let them rest. you got to let them regroup and soak up all them juices. So I'm going to lay out some foil and uh, get this bad boy resting. And then we'll uh, slice up the ribs and brisket and everything together. Okay, so you'll see my foil. It's actually the same exact way that I did the ribs foil. It's just uh, I laid one this way and then I laid one on top of it going this way. And that's so we can get a complete wrap on this brisket. So I'm going to pull the brisket out and throw it on here and get it wrapped up nice and tight. Throw on one last dusting of Meat Church Holy Cow. Because this thing has got juices in it and it's going to create more juices as you wrap it and let it rest. So we want to make sure that we give it some flavor to get that au jus settled in. Get it wrapped nice and tight and kind of let it steam in there. And then second layer, real nice and tight again. That's it. That thing is sitting and resting for now. Put those on top of it because it's like an insulating blanket um i could probably put them in a cooler but it's great uh, advertisement for old cosmo as if he needs like he needs my advertisement anyways uh that's just what i like to do when i'm in a pinch i just throw those on top there's a little insulation with the table beneath it that'll sit there for i don't know 10 15 minutes and it'll be ready for us to slice and chop and chow down so in about 10 15 minutes i'm going to be back out here i'm going to be slicing and dicing and i'm going to cut up some of those ribs and try those out and let you know how they turned out stick around comment below what kind of flavors you like on your ribs and also if you've ever used an ugly drum smoker do you like ugly drum smokers what kind of smokers do you use i've got stick burners i've got uds i've got uh, offsets i've got charcoal i've got pellet smokers all kinds of stuff you let me know what kind of grill you like to use in the comment below. We'll be right back. Slicing, dicing, and tasting. And we are back, guys, for our final shot of this little video, making some brisket and ribs and uh, some asparagus. Asparagus? 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 I don't know. Whatever you call multiple asparagus on the Ugly Drum Smokers. Man, I love my twins. They're not identical. They're maternal or paternal. I don't know, they're two white twins. They're two white ugly drum smokers. So anyways, I'm gonna get the camera set up. We've got our brisket still, got our brisket still uh, doing its thing, cooling off. I opened it up so it'll vent, kind of let some of that steam out. Um, but I wanna show you some of these ribs. Maybe we can see them a little bit better now. I don't know, maybe not. Lighting's not real good. So anyways, that one right there. Dude, that looks awesome. It just looks awesome. That is the ghost pepper, honey, butter, chipotle. This is the butter chipotle with a tiny bit of ghost pepper. And this is the honey butter only. Honey butter only. All right, so you can see what those look like. There's a great mahogany color with the glaze on these. This one's got a great mahogany color, but it's it looks like a dry rub uh, meat because we didn't glaze it afterwards, but it's still a juicy meat. And this bark is set up really nicely. I'm really happy with that. Didn't even have to wrap this brisket to cook it. So I am gonna go ahead and just move this off to the side so we can go ahead and start slicing up these awesome looking ribs we are going to start with the one without any juices in it or on it so that uh, there's not any contamination um, across the board so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move these over and uh, we're going to cut this one first and put it 
put the slices back in this foil boat on the pan and then um, we'll cut this one and then this one. That's just to keep the, the flavors from mixing up too, too much. Oh man, I think, see, a lot of people like their ribs like that soft, where they just fall off the bone and break like that. I don't, I think that's overcooked, but uh, most people think that that's perfect because they're that tender. For competitions, that's that's overcooked, that's too much. So I turn it over, I know a lot of guys cringe when people turn over their ribs to cut them, but these being baby backs, these ribs are like all wonky, and weird, and man, this is just so soft, golly. That's almost embarrassing to show, actually. <laughs> What a freaking mess. I mean, they taste awesome. They taste good. They just look like a bag of you-know-whats. Golly. That sucks. All right, well, whatever. The reality of cooking. <clears throat> Sometimes it just sucks. Okay. Let's see and pray that these did better. Remember this one left the juices inside of it. Try to feel for a bone here. Oh, the easier cut. Better cut the show. So, that bone just pulled right out. Mmm. Now this was the sweet honey butter. That's pretty good with a with a dash of ghost pepper. That's pretty good. I realize now for all my buddies in competitions that are watching this, running their mouth, knowing that some of y'all I beat y'all. Every time we make ribs, this is not a good run. Uh, if you noticed, I'm like, I'm wearing a cap in some instances. I'm not wearing a cap in some instances. And sometimes I change clothes during these videos. It's because I run a business as well. And uh, so, man, I've been all over the place today. Just back and forth. Or the bone. The delicious bone, but it's a bone. And so, I try to make these in between running a business, keeping customers happy, keeping employees paid, and all that good stuff. So, I, I may have let these go a little long, but man, they taste good. The flavor's good. And they're not burnt. It's just they're overcooked. They got too tender. They got way too tender. Alright, I'm gonna eat a whole one and see what it's like. Alright. Man, the flavor is better. Mmm. The juiciness is there. It just looks like crap. Man. You see there's just a barely a little bit of white. This is all bone color, but there's just some white right there. Splotches of white. That's what you want to see. 
that's how you know it's still juicy. If you get a bone that's just white, bleached white, that stuff dry. Don't eat it. It'll probably taste like crap anyways. But this looks like crap. It tastes amazing. Oh. 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 I don't do that. I don't lick my fingers unless I'm just feeding my family, by the way. This one. This one's good. this one to eat it looks the most decent clean bite through yeah that's all right again not a bleached white bone just a few splotches ever so often. Man, they look like crap. They taste great. The brisket will redeem me. I haven't cooked baby backs in a long time, but I've cooked a lot of briskets very recently. So the brisket shall, you shall redeem me, brisket. I'm, I'm telling you, you have to. This is not a, please do it. This is a uh, do it or I'm gonna lose my freaking mind. <laughs> Anyways, so we got ooh, a little spicy. So we got our flat right here. I know that my flat, um, the grains, I can kind of see them. They're running this way. So I'm gonna make my slices right here. But I'm gonna cut this point off first. Um, follow that fat line with your knife and man it, it just cuts right through it and i'll leave some fat on the back side of the flat too um just because it's i think it's better that way so let's take and cut this bad boy right here dang dang good smoke ring look at those juices yes sir I knew this would redeem me. All right, let's see if we can, this is not my normal slicing knife. Let's see if we can slice up a piece. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've been redeemed. Oh. Mm. That's why I'm the brisket medic and not the baby back rib medic. Oh, Lee, that's good. I'm gonna finish slicing that up. Dude, it's so good. Look at that. I'm going to look like a four-year-old because I'm going to be out here licking my freaking fingers. So good. That's why I'm the brisket medic. That brisket's on point. Those ribs look like a bag of doo-doo. But they taste good and they're juicy. That's what she said. Anyways, so subscribe, like, share, do all those things. Comment below what you like. And if you like those ugly drum smokers, thank you. And we'll see you again. Bye.